Hey YouTube, so uh, long time no talk, making a video here. Um, so this will be a tournament report for my San Diego Regionals. Um, it's going to be a tournament report slash vlog. So if you guys want to just go straight to the tournament report, uh, you can skip it over to over there. I'll put a like a note here so you can skip over to over there. But yeah, um, I'll just start how the, um, the event went before I go into the tournament report. Just to do a little summary, it was my first Regionals of the season, uh, second event of the season as well. Um, my first event of the season was uh, YCS San Diego where I was also playing Burning Abyss, but obviously that was a super inferior deck. Um, I think the Spirals was like the best deck at the time, and um, the Pendulums too, and BA had like, no chance, but uh, it was the only deck I knew how to play, and we just played for YCS San Diego. From then, uh, we opened the store, and I didn't have time to go to regionals or anything like that. Um, I had to do a lot of business stuff, so my first regionals of the season was San Diego regionals. Um, I knew that I had to do well, or just good enough to get the invite because I didn't want to go to any other events. I want to be at the store at all times, especially for the first year um, running this business. I went 6-2-1, 6 wins, 2 losses, 1 tie. Came in 3rd, 3rd place. It was 40 invites, 420 man uh, event. So um, yeah, 33rd 30, got me the invite. So with that being said, we'll just go back to the beginning of how um, the event started for me. So just to let you guys know, geographically, uh, San Diego isn't uh, the closest regionals to us. Um, it's actually a two hour drive for me and a, like a two, it was like two and a half hour drive and then about three and a half hour drive from LA. So on Friday I went to work and um, got off around three o'clock ish, uh, came in early, left a little early. So because I knew uh, Johnny and Jonathan were they're driving down from LA to sleep over my house and um, also Dario too. The reason for that is uh, so they can save an hour drive and then um, they, we can test a little more at the at my house. So um, they drove down and we got we kind of met up around four ish. It was also Johnny's birthday that week, so happy birthday, Johnny! Um, <laughs> I got him a bunny suit. <laughs> well, first I got him a astronaut suit, but he didn't fit it. It was a medium, so I gave him my bunny suit. Um, so there's a picture here, uh, pretty funny. So uh, it was Johnny's birthday, and uh, we went out for Korean barbecue. It was uh, me, Jonathan, Johnny, and Dario. Uh, unfortunately, Bowie couldn't go because uh, it was Lent for him, and it was Friday. Poor Bowie had to eat fish fillet Fridays. Uh, for McDonald's. Uh, so we had the cream barbecue, we came back, we tested a little more. Pretty much Jonathan already had a deck set. Shout out to Jonathan for making the deck. Um, he, he called me earlier saying, bro, you didn't even shout out to your deck profile, but you know, it wasn't a, it was a deck profile, it wasn't a tournament report. So shout out to Jonathan, he made the whole deck, he tested on DN and everything. And um, yeah, I, I really had no say in the deck, except for the side deck. So pretty much the deck was set already, and uh, we just tested the whole night. Uh, especially me, because I never I haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh in like you know forever, so I do not know what Pendulums do. I don't know what to add. I don't know what to, what to Ogre. I don't know what to Reaper. Well, obviously Reaper's Electromite, but I didn't know like when to do certain things in um, the deck. Like you can give a person a full-on like Pendulum deck, and if they don't know how to play it, like they're gonna lose. So I had to figure out like, what to Ash, what to Ogre. For Pendulum matchup is a little easier because um they're like oh whenever you see Electromite, just uh, Veiler it and uh, Ogre it. Um <laughs> don't Ogre it, Veiler anything else. And then I'll always ask the Dragon Shrine and Foolish Burial and Pot of obviously, and Pendulum Call. So um, that matchup is a little easier. But um, I know Invoke was going to be a big deck, but I don't know how to play against it. Uh, I'll, I only know how to play against Invoke from back in the day. So um, I look, I watched Nindun's pro deck profile a couple days back while Mech Knights, and I figured out that don't put cards in the same row. So like when I was playing, I was putting cards like this, you know, like um, my Beatrice will be here, my Monster, my Dante will be here, and then my set card will be over here. I, I don't know what it does, but from what Nimnum told me was that don't put stuff in the same row. So that's why I did all day, just in case I played uh, Invoked. The season card bullshit deck, I kind of already know how to play against that deck because um, it's like any other Minerva Mill deck. I um, have experience playing against that since uh, a couple forms back. Same thing with the True Draco, I kind of have experience with that with um, two forms back as well when I was playing ABC. Um, so yeah, uh, I had experience with those decks already. So that was pretty much the meta. Oh, Spirals. Um, I don't know what Spirals do, so, hope so thankfully I didn't play Spirals. So that's what we did all Friday night. And um, uh, we tested, and um, we set, we wrote a deck list, and went to sleep. John this up with me here at Chainman Sheets. He didn't take a shower after eating cream barbecue, which is fucking gross, because cream barbecue is on your clothes, and uh, he smelled like barbecue all night. But <laughs> whatever, it's okay. Um, Dario slept on the couch, and Johnny slept on the, um, the bed in the uh, in the back room, I guess. I don't know what you gonna call it. So that was pretty much it. We slept around 11 p.m., 12 a.m. ish, and then uh, we woke up around uh, 6 30 ish 7 so the goal was to leave um, Orange County around 7 ish to get to San Diego around 8 39 and then we'll pre-register um, without paying the cap because the last two times I went there uh, there was a cap off and um, we, we obviously didn't want to get capped out 
Um, so Bui drove over around 6.45 ish. Uh, I took a shower and we went to our near 7 Eleven, got our snacks for the day, and then we drove down, where I drove down to San Diego. Um, we got San Diego around 9 ish, like we t anticipated, and uh, registered. I pulled Lecture My. Jonathan needed it for. Um, his extra deck for the Reaper target, so just gave him an Electromite. So that was pretty good, I started the day pretty well, pulling Electromite. So round one started and I sat down in front of my opponent. My opponent was from Mexico, he told me he was from Tijuana, and um, he was talking to his friend to the right. And uh, his, fr his friend was shuffling a deck, and I looked at his friend's deck and he was, I saw um, a C Crush Wyvern, and I was like, oh, he's playing ABC. Huh, I wonder if my opponent's playing ABC too. And lo and behold, he was playing ABC. Um, I was actually pretty scared playing ABC matchup, because um, Beatrice is really bad uh, against that matchup because um, Farquaad doesn't really do anything and then Buster just banished your Beatrice. Uh, they run exceeds and stuff that are bigger than 2500. So I was pretty scared of that matchup. So game one he went Desires first and then he summoned an A and passed. And then I just like did my usual um, BA combos and stuff and I, and I beat him. And I was like, huh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he banished all his pieces. And he, and he did, he told me after uh, I beat him that he did um, banish all his Bs that game. Uh, game two, um, he kind of misplayed. He didn't know Alec negates like the whole effect, so I attacked his ABC Buster and he tried to tag out. And um, I was like, oh, it doesn't work because it's negated. And he's like, oh shit, I messed up. And then uh, that's pretty much it. I went after that. So um, misplays for days. And uh, I beat him 2 0. So I'm feeling pretty good. I got my first win of the day. Um, got my warm up match in. So round 2, I played against 60 card bullshit. Thank God he didn't draw uh, grass or anything like that. He, um, game 1, he kind of bricked. He just summoned, he didn't have like the charge, recharge, um, unit zombie combo. And then game two, I kind of break as well, but I had, I had hand traps. So I was just like bailering and ashing all his cards. And I was just like poking in with um, my, my bar bar. And then uh, that was pretty much, pretty much it. Um, I beat him, I 2 owed him too. So for round three, I played against um, True Draco, which is like the worst matchup. Because there's no way to beat that deck unless we draw evenly match. And um, they just draw too much advantage. I call the Holy Trinity, Pod of Duality, into Pod of Desires, into Pod of Demise. Um, they always have that combo for some weird reason. Set 5, um, what was it? Diagram, and then Monster Tributed, and then have the Trap card to Master Piece you during their end phase, or something like that. I don't know, it's, it was ridiculous. So that, 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 that matchup was like super bad, super hard. Um, but fortunately for me, round 3, for some weird reason, my opponent was like twitching, or he was like super tired, or something like that. He was like, so like, I, I knew he was like playing off, and he was misplaying like left and right. So um, yeah, I beat him. I beat him 2-0. He was just not activating his monster effects um, in response to my effects. So I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Um, maybe he won't save his cards, we ran out of targets. I don't know, whatever the reason. Uh, I 2 0 him too. So yeah, um, now I'm 3-0. And um, this is where like, my curse is usually at. I usually lose my fourth match. Like in every event, I, use my, I lose my fourth match. And then after that, it's all downhill. Um, but if I end up winning my fourth match, uh, I do pretty well. Because usually when I win my fourth match, I'm usually like, I win out after that. Like I know for 2016 Nats and um, 2015 Nats, I won my fourth match and I went like 7-0 and or 6-1. and So yeah, usually that's the curse for me. I need to win my fourth match to do well today. But unfortunately, I lost my fourth match, uh, or I tied my first ma my fourth match. I played against uh, Mech Knight Invoked. Uh, I won game one. Um, he, de he desired, I think he desired like really bad. And um, he only had like one uh, invocation left in the deck, and I was able just to like outplay him. Game two, <laughs> I had game like oh my god, I was so mad because um, I went Dante Mill and hit a BA, um, a spell card, and then Barbar. Bar. He was at uh, 4100, and then um, so I burned him just for one because I had no other BAs in there except for a Sir, and I didn't want to banish it for some reason. I was like, oh, what if like I don't have game? Like I don't know, um, I might need still need a Sir, so I did banish the Sir. On board, uh, he had a clear board because I had a Virgil and um, a Dante. And then I was like, oh, attack with Virgil, attack with Dante for game. And then he flipped over Barrier. And I was like, Foo! So my Dante went back to 1000, and um, he was left with 300 life points left. So I was like, oh my god, if I just banished that Sir with Barbar, -Bar, I would have like had game. And then he, <laughs> after that, he made sure that he didn't leave a monster on board to like, for me to just do like 300 worth, the, worth of damage. And um, pretty much he turned the game over because he just went like invocation and went like Mech Knight and all that stuff and went off on me. And yeah, so I lost that game by 300 because I didn't bar bar him. So yeah, that was unfortunate, so we tied. So now I'm 3 0 1. Round 5, I played against uh, um, True Draco again. Um, just to let you guys know, I played against four True Dracos that day. Four of my worst matchups. So just saying. Um, so I played against True Draco again. 
and I got Drew the Holy Trinity like three times in the same game, and it was insane. Um, he popped like all my stuff. Uh, he Imano Iwano my, me going. Um, I went first game one. He Imano Iwano me, and uh, this is when I learned like, oh, don't make Beatrice because Beatrice is gonna get Imano Iwano, and then you just lose. At a Sir Farfa Dante Beatrice, and then he Imano Iwano me and set trap, sacrificed it, and then my Beatrice died with like four materials on it. I was like, oh my god, I, now I lose because um, my Beatrice was like so heavily invested in that card. So that was pretty much game one and two. Um, that that, game, that match lasted like six minutes and like it doesn't help that I draw Veilers and Strikes going first too like game one it's Veilers and Strikes so bad that I get that, gets that deck okay so then um, now I'm 3-1-1 one, one, and I, I think in my head I'm like oh man um, I don't even know if 3-2-1s make it but then because um, some X3s uh, don't make it so I was like okay so I, I think 3-1-1s um, one, one can still top but 3-2-1s is kind of be a little sketch so they just try to win out and hopefully top right but then I played Invoke Mech Knight round 6, and <laughs> that guy just tooled the hell out of me. Yeah, that, that match lasted like 2 minutes, or like, no, because side deck, that's like 5 minutes. Because, uh, <laughs> I didn't know this, but um, he had a, um, the the field spell, the um, the volcanic card, or the volcano looking card, I probably was called, but the one that searched Alistair. So he book a moon my Beatrice, and I sent out Skarm to end phase search, and then he mind controlled my Beatrice, and then... Uh, at this time, I didn't know what he was playing, so there's no reason for me to spar for my Beatrice for no reason after he book a moon. He mind controlled my Beatrice, and then he played Invocation. Uh, I didn't know this, but apparently you can't respond because of the, um, the the field spell. So then my Beatrice just fell off, and I didn't get any Sir Dante effect because I can't chain in response to the summoning of the fusion monster. I was like, holy shit, that play was mind blowing. Like I never seen that before in my life, and I was like, whoo, that blew my mind. I'm pretty sure a lot of players that play Invoke know this combo, but I didn't know it. So I was like, whoa, you you deserve to win, man. <laughs> you're so good at this game. And then game two, he I just bricked, and he just like had the nuts, and then he killed me. So now I'm 3 2 one and um, I felt really bad, because even if I win all of my games, I might not make it, and um, and I can't lose anymore, so that sucked. I was thinking in my head, like, if only I like bash, I want to carve a barbar, I wouldn't be in the situation, like, I would have to like, win, and uh, I'll have more no lifeline. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So the next matchup, I played another True Draco. Um, I was like, oh my god, another one of you guys? God damn it. <laughs> I just want to play any more True Dracos. Um, so we sat down, and I seen him before, because um, he came to my shop at, on the grand opening. He's from Team Woven. Um, really cool guy, really cool team. Their mat's like super lit. Um, Shouts to them. So there's another True Draco deck. Oh, um, fortunately, I won this time 2-1. Um, I won in time, because uh, he couldn't get past my BAs. Um, I kind of just played this game. He had a set monster and a set spell and trap. And then I had a Beatrice, and um, I wanted to get him more damage, so I summoned a uh, tour guide and uh, brought a Rhino to try to do more damage. But then he 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 flipped over um, his face down card, and it happened to be uh, the trap card. And then he sacrificed uh, a Nash Blossom for Masterpiece. So I was like, holy crap! Um, our life points were really close to each other, so he could have ran over my, my tour guide and won the game. But I was like, okay, so I need to be able to get rid of this tour guide and um, not die. So I was trying to make Saruja, but um, I only had three cards on the board, so I couldn't. So I had to run, run in my Beatrice into the, the um, Masterpiece, let it die, don't bring anything out, and then make a Dante with um, my Tour Guide and uh, Rhino, and then just start setting up a wall with um, my rest of the BAs in hand, because I was like plus six on him already at the time. So that, that's how I won um, game three. So now 4-2-1, um, I just need one two more. Round 8, I played against a uh, Pendulum player. It was my first Pendulum matchup in the day. I think he was kind of new to the deck because he was kind of misplaying like a lot. Uh, he wasn't like electromining dumping for some reason. So I was like, it's kind of weird. And then, um, so I won him, I beat him game 1. And then game 2, I Reapered him and noticed that he didn't have a second Electromite. And I was like, wait, what, what's going on? You guys aren't playing a second Electromite. And he's like, oh yeah, I lent my friend a Electromite. I'm like, okay. But <laughs> instead, that actually hurt me because um, in his extra deck, he had some obscure cards that like does extra damage to me. So um, he killed me game two, and then game three, um, I was I I um, was able to Virgil his cards away and then attack for game. So that was that was pretty much it. So now I am five two one. I just need one more win to get my invite. And um, last matchup, lo and behold, it's freaking um, True Draco again. This guy's probably the coolest player I played all day. He's really really funny. Um, we've talked a little bit while playing. It was probably the most relaxed bubble game I ever played in my Yu-Gi-Oh career. He was super cool. Unfortunately, or fortunately for me, I guess, uh, he bricked. <laughs> um, game one, he uh, he drew double masterpiece. He's like, oh wow, I bricked. He showed. He even showed me too. It's like, oh, I bricked. And then uh, he kept trying to keep playing. 
he drew Demise and it kind of went back and forth until I was able to like just attack for game. Game two, I had uh, I was able to um, get Kaiju's out to uh, run uh, to play over his masterpieces, and that was pretty much it. Kaiju did Farfoot did away and then attack for game, and that was pretty much it. Like I'm invite, so it was a pretty sweet day for me. Uh, ended the day six two one. Don't have to play another event until nationals. So that's why I went to Lucha Libre, which is like my go-to place every time I go to San Diego. It's like a Mexican uh, California place. They put like fries in your burrito. I don't know, it's really good. Um, it's really carb carby, so it's good for people that haven't been eating all day. Um, so it was really good for me. Um, so we finished uh, the tournament around 10-ish. Um, uh, we got out of the event around 10-ish, we went to eat 11-ish, and then we drove back um, around 12-ish, and we got back to my house around um, 1.30. And then um, they decided to go back to LA, because next day we had a Dragon Ball event, which is like a 48-man tournament, so we had to be there. So I knew that I had to wake up early to go um, back to LA. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the tournament report. A couple shoutouts I want to give is uh, uh, thank you to Jonathan for the list. Thank you Johnny for getting the cards for me, even though you sold my ashes. Um, thank you for Dario for testing with me. I know he didn't want to play against me because um, he's like, what the hell man, I'm all playing Burning Abyss, I'm not going to play against this thing in the tournament. But he let me practice, um, gave me a lot of uh, tips on what to hit and stuff like that. Same thing with Johnny too. Uh, Shoutouts to Bowie, he helped us judge on Sunday. And uh, always a good, good time with Bowie. Uh, kept us awake during the car ride, so um, Jonathan and Vui were having a karaoke battle in the car. Shout out to the Killers, the best band for a car ride. Well, we, we always play Mr. Brightside on every car ride. Um, shout out to Tony and Asala. Um, Asala for giving me some extra tips mid round. Because I was ashing terraforming, so like, bro, why are you, why are you ashing terraforming? That's a, bad, that's a bad play. Don't ash terraforming. Always ash like the Pod Desires and Car Demise. Don't waste your ash blossom on terraforming. After that, I started winning. So uh, shout out to Asala for the pro tips. Shout out to everyone that wish me get good luck. Hopefully no LCQs in our room anymore. So pretty much that's it for my tournament report. And thank you guys for watching. If you guys watched my whole 26 minute video for my deck profile, um, congrats to you man. Yeah, you made it through. This video is probably going to be pretty long too as well. And so if you guys got to this far, um, thank you guys for watching. Um, subscribe if you haven't done so. And uh, let me know if you guys have any questions down below. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one on YouTube. Bye.